Hello, I chose an article to discuss today about how online learning is revolutionizing K-12 education and benefiting students by Dan Lips. I found this article intriguing for several reasons. First most is this semester is the first time I've participated in a fully online course. Now I did take a virtual classroom course at ETSU during my undergraduate, but that was in an actual classroom at ETSU. And we met in the classroom and we had a virtual instructor. I'm not sure exactly where that instructor was. I can't remember at this time, uh, but that was my first experience, I guess, truly having an online course. This is my first fully online course. And what I mean by a full time online course as uh, pertaining to this article is it's at my own pace. All the information's out there, it's available for us, and we can work through these modules at our own pace. And, and then our instructor actually uh, evaluates them and gives us feedback based on what they're seeing from our work. Now, there's a couple different ways this can happen. One is it can be asynchronous, and that's what we're doing now. As I said, the modules are out there, we're able to work, finish things at our own pace. And then there can also be synchronous uh, virtual classrooms and this is where you meet and it's real time you're actually online at the same time as your fellow classmates and your instructor now both of these types can be from home or from a designated place i told you uh, my undergraduate experience was we were in a designated location and that's where we met to have the course but other online formats can be from anywhere and then there's also a third type, which I think is very important and probably my favorite is a blended uh, learning environment. And this is where you have traditional face to face meetings, uh, but then they're supplemented with an online format such as a learning management system where you're having all your information available to you. I like these because it decreases uh, extraneous cognitive load. So all your information materials that you need are all located in one place. And then you can also still meet with an instructor to hopefully get any kind of clarifications that you need uh, on information. Now, going along with this article, um, he talks about the benefits of learning with an online uh, system. One is it increases access. Of course, uh, internet's pretty much everywhere today. And one thing great is not only do you have the increase in access to where the locations that you're in, but you also have increased access to the quality of, of teaching. Meaning, if schools thought I was a very good instructor, um, I could teach an online course anywhere in the United States or anywhere in the world, as long as you know we could communicate in some way um, and, and get our objectives clear. Now, this is important because we do have a lot of disparate areas, um, such as, you know, look at our own region, Southwest uh, Virginia, Southeast Kentucky, there are some very small um, locations or towns and, and communities there where they probably couldn't get the uh, quality of teachers say New York City could get. Um, and then you think of even more disparate locations such as uh, Alaska. Um, there's places in North Dakota, Montana, you know, that very small locations that, that have low budgets um, and, and couldn't afford to uh, entice someone to move to those areas. So this is a way that you get away from some of that. Plus, you also can have socioeconomical differences. Um, schools in poor, poor locations uh, typically don't have as good a quality teachers. So this is important uh, to get the access and the quality of education to everyone. Also, this allows for greater custom customization, um, not only of the educational experience, because you know now students can compete or can complete their assignments at their own pace. Now, I can tell you from my experience, <laughs> I was always frustrated with how slow the learning would go and, and it seemed like it was geared towards the lowest common denominator. And it would have been nice to have been able to have moved along at my own pace. I could have been finished uh, with many of the objectives and been able to move to maybe some, some higher objectives that would have challenged me a little more as a child. So I can see the, the benefits there. And then you also have flexibility. The flexibility to do these on your own time. Uh, my oldest daughter was homeschooled 
and she was able to work through these modules at her own pace. Um, she was highly competitive in swimming, still is, and this gave her the option of using her time um, to develop her skills in that er arena or to, like I said, work on different assignments. But this also creates flexibility for the teachers as well. I already mentioned that I could teach a course anywhere in the world, so there's flexibility in that. Plus, there's my time as well because I could spend a lot of time one day working on developing the online format um, and then maybe take a few days off and then, you know, come back, do my evaluations and take some time off again. So it allows some flexibility there as well. And what we've seen from all of this is an increase in productivity um, and efficiency. And they get this from reduced costs from having a brick and mortar location and also because technology is becoming cheaper. Now, the author offers up some evidence from the U.S. Department of Education. They did a meta-analysis. Now, this is older information. This article was from 2010. I'm sure this has changed quite a bit since then. It's probably much more widespread and used around the world. But at the time, there were about a million uh, students, and this was in the 2007-2008 study. So there are about a million students who were actively participating in some type of online learning. Now, at the time, it was a breakdown of 64% were in 9th through 12th grade, 21% uh, were in K through 5, and 15% were in 6th through 8th grade. It's kind of intriguing to see that there were more uh, elementary schools utilizing online education than middle schools at the time. Um, not sure what the reason was there, and he didn't offer any explanation in, in his uh, video or in his article, I'm sorry. So anyway, they did this uh, meta-analysis in the students in uh, all or part-time online courses uh, perform better than their traditional counterparts. Now, I think one that keeps showing over and over again is not only did the online students do better, but then they found way well, the blended learning environment actually produced the best results. And we've seen this repeated with college students and other things um, in some of our materials for this course. So it calls for, you know, an action. And that's what Dan Lips does in this article. He wants to see schools utilize online learning uh, more often and have more availability. And he wants the states to be able to be flexible and, and figuring out ways for parents to look at their child's education so that they can customize it in a way that best fits their needs. Now, I, I agree totally with this article. Um, it makes sense, uh, but I still see the value of the brick and mortar um, because of the results that show the blended learning environment is um, outperforming all the other types. That being said, uh, I've already told you my experience growing up. Yes, I wish I could have work through some of this different materials at my own pace so that I could have moved on to, to higher learning or at least more challenging learning for myself. And I think that's great that we're looking for different ways that we can maybe engage these children um, to be more self-directed in their learning. Thank you very much. If you have any questions or comments, please comment in the discussion section. I look forward to hearing from you.